Hey guys, Mike with Landscapers here. We are going to go over today in the beautiful city of Keller, Texas, how to program your Hayward VS pump. So if you have a pump that's say an older pump or a smaller one, like a 1.5 or less, typically those are just timer ran and don't actually have an interface with them. But everything 165 and above, which is what we usually put in, is gonna have the variable speed. It's something that's required at this point um, for energy usage, air quotes. Anyway, um, so I wanna walk you through how to set this pump up. We're gonna deal with two different menus. We're gonna deal with a configuration menu, which is gonna tell the pump how to act. Then we're also gonna deal with a timer menu, which is gonna allow you to select the RPMs and the times of day you wanna do the timers. So this pump is already actually running on a pool that we've installed. Um, and we, we're to the point right now where this thing has been configured and everything, but I'm just gonna go ahead and walk you through everything so just as though it's just starting from the beginning, you know how to deal with this. So first thing we're gonna do is the power has to be on to this pump in order to program anything. So if it's not on right now for you, go ahead and press the stop resume button and it'll turn on. Then we're gonna press the menu button. Now the menu button, the first thing it's gonna say is configuration menu locked. You're gonna press the right and left arrow and hold them for about four to five seconds. Then it's going to unlock and it'll tell you to press right to enter into the menu. And then it'll tell you plus or minus will change things and pressing right will go to the next option. So the first option is obviously going to be your language, which for me, you can see you can do all sorts of different kinds of things here. I'm really good at English, so I'm going to stay on that. We're going to hit the right arrow to go to the next. Okay, in this case, um, they're going to ask you the time of day. And that's pretty simple, wherever you're at, just go ahead. You're gonna enter the menu by pressing plus to change. It'll ask you the day and time. Go ahead and select it. Um, this is already set, so I'm just gonna kind of leave it, but obviously plus or minus in each one of these flashing things is going to change that. Press right to get to the next one. Okay, so we're good on that one. Um, now it's gonna ask you if you wanna be in RPMs. Um, percentage of full speed honestly those is those are just gonna be a matter of what you want it to say do you want it to tell you what the RPMs are or do you want it to tell you the percentage of the full speed of the pump I say just leave it on RPM but you're welcome to do whichever you like looking at better hit right now it's gonna ask you the maximum allowed speed so you can actually put a collar on this pump and leash it from going too fast um, we don't really do that, so 3450 is the highest it can go. That's what our maximum allowed speed is going to be. Um, then you're going to hit right. Now it's going to ask you for the minimum allowed speed. Now these pumps will go all the way down to 600. I quite honestly don't recommend you go down lower than 900, simply because I like to be I like to have enough circulation in the pool to make sure that I'm going to still be chasing water on the top into the skimmer. Um, any leaves, uh, any grass clippings, things like that. For me, I like to have at least a 900 RPM. That's the slowest I want it to go to make sure the pool stays clean. So we're gonna keep it there. Now here's prime duration. Now what your prime duration is, is it's just for the pump. It has nothing to do with the rest of the system. And it's basically asking you, how long do you want the pump to run at full speed every time you turn it on before it jumps into a timer mode? And it's to, like if you have a lot of times on gunite pools, uh, they're kind of plumbed a little bit differently than we do it. And you need longer prime. I'll, oftentimes they'll have two skimmers, different things like that. These come automatically selected and defaulted at eight minutes. Um, for our systems, with our vacuum systems, the way they're set up, it's just not necessary to ever run them eight minutes long in a prime. Um, our systems prime up pretty much within a minute or less and so I usually set it at a minute and I would say if you're really curious on this thing I can just give you my opinion if you are say 60 feet or less away from your skimmer with your pump then I would leave it for one minute that's going to kick it up full speed when you turn it on and then it'll drop down into your timer menu after that minute if you're more than 60 feet I think I'd put it at two minutes this adjusts up in 30 second increments or down in 30 second increments. But quite honestly, I'm just, for me, I don't like to sit there and 
wait for eight minutes for the thing to jump into my timer mode. So that's what that's for. The next one, remote control standalone, that's if you have basically the VS box that's set up. Um, typically doesn't apply and we're not gonna really cover that on these um, pumps that are just all inclusive here. <laughs> Um, so we're going to move ahead and we're just going to leave it at standalone, which this is a standalone remote. Um, low temp operation disabled or enabled has to do with how, you know, if you want to make it so the pump can't operate at too low of a temperature, this is your selection for there. I actually put enabled because I like to have it so that these pumps, typically in Texas, it doesn't freeze for more than 24 hours. And so therefore, I like to have um, this pump kick on, which it's going to use the ambient temperature around here and sense when it drops below, say about, I think it's about 38 degrees. If it drops below that, it's going to immediately kick this thing on. I don't care what the manual says, it's about 38 degrees. And it'll kick on, and that's to keep your pipes from freezing. And then usually when it hits 41, if you don't have a timer set, it's going to drop off. If you do have a timer set, then it's going to jump into the timer mode. All right, so there's that low temp setting. So this kind of has to do with where it is that you want this thing to kick on. Like I said, 39 degrees about where it usually ends up. Password protection, I'm gonna definitely encourage you not to mess with it. I've had people lock themselves out of the pump and quite honestly, if you have people who are trying to break into your pump and change the settings, you ought to just grab some popcorn and video them and enjoy the show, because why? All right, moving on. Reset all settings. That gives you a chance to start over from the beginning. We're gonna hit no. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna hit no. Use timers menu. Then you're gonna hit one more time and it's gonna ask you to press the menu to exit. Which we're gonna do. And do we wanna save these changes? Yes, we do. Every time you go to same changes, whether we're in the configuration menu or the timers menu, it's gonna shut off to, re to implement all the changes and then it's going to kick back on again. So you can hear that one minute pump prime that we've got set on this. It's running at full speed and it'll shut off in a minute. we will even say that priming for whatever we got left here, 37 seconds. So anyway, so then now that's the configuration of the pump. That's how to make the pump act the way that you want it to for basically all the foundational things. Let's go now into timers. We're gonna hit menu again, the configuration menu, but we're gonna hit it a second time, and then it's gonna go to timers menu. This one does not have a lock on it, so you don't have to hold the two arrows. We're, we're gonna go right to here, and this is gonna operate the same way in setting that we did with the configuration menu. Press plus or minus to change, and press the right arrow to go to the next, chi the next timer. On this one here, we're gonna say press one. You can name this. If you're somebody who's really like developing a, a serious personal relationship with your pump and you want to name your pump timer, feel free to do so. Um, I just leave them at timer one, timer two, timer three, but you know, make it yours. Anyway, um, going to rename, obviously the plus or minus, we're going to move beyond that. So now it's saying timer one, how, how fast do I want timer one to run? Now here's where you get into an interesting situation here. I gotta stand up for a minute. Oh God, <clears throat> I'm, I'm older than I look. Um, so here's my recommendation. When it comes to setting your timers, I like, at least in Texas, which is where we are here, I like the timers to run right around 2,900 RPM throughout the day. That keeps enough flow in the water, and stagnant water tends to evaporate a little bit faster. Also, stagnant water isn't going through the filter as fast. Um, if it's totally stagnant, it's not going through at all, but if it's real slow, it's not moving through the filter as fast. It's not moving through if you have a UV or a chlorinator. It's not moving through any of this very fast. Well, at 100 and something degrees in Texas, like it can get during the day, you can end up with algae blooms pretty quick. So. For me, I like to have enough movement. I'm still being conscious of the electricity usage, so but I wanna have enough movement to make sure everything is getting chased into my skimmer, and then I'm also doing an adequate amount of filtering and UV and chlorinator for every single thing that's going on here. 
Now y'all who have salt cells, um, obviously the UV doesn't necessarily work the same way. Um, you probably don't have a UV if you have a salt cell. I'm not gonna go into my thoughts on salt cells versus UV on this video. I will at some point, and I'll probably lose half of you. But at any rate, um, <clears throat> I like to have a decent amount of flow. So I'm gonna keep it at 2900 throughout most of my daylight hours. And you'll be able to see here, I'll kind of go through how I have a summer setup on this gentleman's floor right here. My summer setup is to run about 2,900 RPM, and I run it from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., okay? So it's usually dark at about 9 p.m., sometimes a little bit later in, in the real heat of the summer. Um, in the morning, it's usually light for a few hours. Again, I'm trying to balance between I like my systems low maintenance. The whole point of selling you our fiberglass pools and the whole point of our system setup is so that it's very, very little maintenance for you. You gunite owners will understand maintenance way more than fiberglass will, and we're proud of that. But <clears throat> at any rate, so I try to balance it between the amount of energy usage that I'm using and making sure that I'm adequately chlorinating and things like that and flow. So I, I like 2,900 from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the summer. We're gonna go on, move to, it'll ask you how many days a week you wanna put it on. Um, and that one's good. So I'm gonna go to the next timer. 1,250 is where I'm gonna take this down to now going from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. So for 12 hours, I'm running about 2,900. For 12 hours, I'm running about 1,250. Now you can go a little bit lower than 1250 because if, if you don't have a spa setup, this gentleman has a spa setup. Um, we like to have that flow. It's also working to get everything out of the spa, chase any top water there, get it into the pool, send it into the skimmer. So I like to have enough flow to keep that spillover going pretty well. Um, but you could probably go as low as 900 on a basic pool without a spa set up and be fine. You just don't ever want to shut these off. And there's a lot of different opinions out there. I mean, it's just like Ford, Chevy, Dodge. Everybody's got their thoughts. I'm telling you what works for us in over 600 installs, what has worked for us very well and what we have found through trial and error here in the Texas area. So. Anyway, I recommend to leave these things running 24 seven. So that's why you see that I have it set from a 9 a.m. to a 9 p.m. and then a 9 p.m. to a 9 a.m. I have these things never stop. I don't ever like filtering stopping. I don't ever like chlorinating stopping. I don't ever like UV stopping, any of that. I like everything to keep going. I just wanna swim in my pool. I don't wanna clean it. I don't wanna take care of algae bloom. So anyways, to kind of wrap this up, let's go through the rest of the menu here. Um, so again, this is simple enough. Now you understand it. We're gonna press plus or minus to change anything, or we can go to the next timer. Hayward offers four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different timers that you can pick. Um, again, I don't understand somebody who would need eight timers, but hey, you got them if you want them. So at any rate, once you get to the end of this menu, it's gonna work the same as the last one. It's gonna tell you to press menu to exit. If you're in a situation, we didn't really change anything here, but if you were in a situation where we made any changes or you made any changes, it's gonna ask you to press the plus to confirm and to save. Then it's gonna shut off and it's gonna reactivate with that new information. It is extremely important that you remember the save because if you don't remember save and you get through everything, nothing's gonna change and you'll be coming out, well, I don't understand, I, I programmed my pump. That's probably the most important thing. You'll know you did it right when the thing shuts off when you're done and then starts back up again. So guys, that's how you program the Hayward pump for the timers, and that's how you program the Hayward pump, pump for configuration. We here at Landscrapers or True Pool Company Ascension, we don't do any of your programming for you because we've had people come back later and complain, well, you said that this RPM would do, so I just stay out of it. But now you know how to do it for yourself. You know what our recommendations are. And let's just cover one last thing here at the end, which is winter. When you're in the winter, no, you do not have the, have the thing running at 29 RPM or 2900 RPM. I do recommend it like for a few hours out of the day on my own personal pool. I'll run it from like 11 a.m. till say 4 p.m. at that higher speed. 
just to make sure that, especially in Texas, we have a lot of wind that comes through. I like stuff, I like the pool cleaning itself. I want everything top water to end up in the skimmer before it gets heavy and sinks to the bottom and I got a vacuum, I want a vacuum. That's why I bought a fiberglass pool. So at any rate, it's this is the best kind of advice that I can give you and this is how you program your Hayward pump. And um, man, I hope this answers all your questions for you and we'll see you on the next one.